Hey, beautiful human beings of the world. This is uh, part three of our first theme of economics. So after this week, we are 20% of the way done with this course. So uh, buckle up because we're uh, the, this semester is going to fly by fast. So uh, for this particular uh, week, what I want to do is look at the factor market, which I've kind of introduced in the past two weeks. However, I want to revisit this brief organizer and just say that this is part of the five major concepts we're looking at for this first theme. So remember, we have scarcity, incentives, factors of production, and also opportunity cost. And now we're looking at this fifth one here in a little, in a little bit greater detail. So when it comes to the factor market, remember that I'm always speaking about the factors of production. Um, this always has to do with goods and services, and these are the ultimate things that we produce every single day, every single minute, and everything that we do, when, especially when you go to your job. So you'll notice that there are firms, households. Households provide land, labor, and capital to firms. The firms use these three factors of production from households and then give them uh, goods and services. On the other hand, firms provide payment to households for their land, labor, and capital. And in exchange for the goods and services, the households give the firms payment. So whenever you buy something, you're giving the firm or whatever it is that you're buying it from your money. The four factors of production I've already explained in earlier uh, um, videos. So if you are a little bit confused on that, I encourage you to go back and watch those videos. But what I want to do is focus on this fourth factor here. And it's pretty pretty recent in terms of how often people are starting to label this fourth factor of production. It's pretty new to the field, if I should say. So when it comes to an entrepreneur, what or who do I mean? First of all, remember an entrepreneur is someone who uses land, labor, and capital to either make a business or they use those three factors of production to produce a good or service. And it can be either in a creative way or it can just simply be copying what someone else has done. Um, like a McDonald's franchise, for example. So there are three main parties with the factor market. So in this example, this 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 picture is not holistic. It's missing the third party that I like to include when I think of the economy. So when it comes to entrepreneurs, you can either have the government. The government has employees who create goods and services. And the government also pays businesses to produce things for the country as a whole. So this would be like uh, the local government wants to build a school. So they're going to pay private contractors to build the school building. Uh, and then they're going to also provide public goods in the form of education to students in that community. Firms are businesses that use the factors of production from households to make goods and services. They also provide wages to people like you and I when we go to our job. Households, this is simply a fancy term to just say people like you and I. So when you go to your job, you are providing your land, your labor, and your capital. Land being natural resources in case you're a farmer. Capital being the training and skills you bring to your job. And also um, labor, which is your physical work that you're, you're putting into your product. Now... If I was to show you a more accurate uh, picture of the factor market, uh, you can see what it looks like here when I move my camera out of the way. But you would see that there are th the three different parties. So this picture is better than this picture because this one is more accurate. So all three of these parties or individuals or groups or organizations are interacting with each other constantly day in and day out right now as you're watching this video they are it's, it's happening people are making things for the, com the, the economy so in each relationship you see that households provide money and lay in labor and capital to firms when which in exchange uh, who in exchange to give households goods and services and also wages and contracts so this is you go to your job, you provide them with the factors of production they need to make stuff. They then give you that stuff back and you can pay them back in terms of money from your paycheck is then go into the firm that you bought stuff from. The relationship between the government and firms looks like this. You can see wages and contracts here and also goods and services. Private companies make things for the government 
in exchange for money from the government. Government gets its money from taxes and also from other uh, factors of production that households give to the government. So the government has, I believe the government is one of the largest employers in the United States, and all of the employees that show up on a daily basis provide their land, labor, and capital to the government. Households like you and I also provide taxes, which are then used to fund a, a number of government programs. And in exchange, when we pay our taxes, we get public goods like roads, schools, libraries, uh, fire fight, uh, firefighting stations. I, I can't recall the name right now. Fire stations, I think. Uh, police stations, cop cars, all the things that we need to keep our society safe, clean, and orderly uh, comes from in the form of public goods. And at the center of this all is money. And simply what this picture or this dollar sign means is we do these things because every single group in this diagram expects to profit from trading with one another. So they can either get profit in the form of money, innovation for new products or new ideas on how to do things, satisfaction for consumers like you and I. So if we want a Netflix documentary, we're going to request that a firm such like like Netflix produces a documentary that we might like. Uh, and at the end of the day, you benefit from trading with someone else. So now that we looked at why they why we do these things, why this diagram exists, what happens next? And what I say there are there are three key economic benefits that happens when we provide or work, uh, operate in the factor market. One, there's better productivity. Our national PPC production possibility curve shifts outward um, when we are able to produce more things. We work harder, we work better, we work smarter. Uh, and because of that, we're able to make more products. It also means increased investment. So firms have access to uh, better loans. And if you own stock in a company, which then expands operations because they got a loan, you now are able to have stocks that are worth higher prices. You or they give you a bonus, which you can then use to put in the bank. There's also this more this uh, the the most important one I would say out of these three is that we have a higher standard of living whenever we all cooperate and produce goods and services for each other. And standard of living simply boils down to is what is your access to a quality life? Do you have access to good health care, quality, a quality living space, education, sanitation, um, all of the other things about you or the, the services you need on a daily basis to be able to live at a very high, uh, in a high quality manner. So are you in a dilapidated neighborhood or are you in a, in a, in a well-to-do society where everyone has access to the things they need, even if it may be a little expensive? So with that, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Or if you have questions about your project as well, uh, reach out to me at ksanders at perryschools.org. And I hope you are having a beautiful night, day, evening, or whatever time of day it is that you're watching this.